in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I think one of these days when I'm tired, I'll just beg them to organize another program. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for grace, even as we learn from him tonight. Lift up your hands and ask the Lord for a visitation, even at this conference. Thank you, Father, because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Someone is praying. You're talking to the king, you're talking to your maker, you're talking to the heavenly father. The Bible says you are come unto Mount Zion. Lord, we thank you. Ask him to give you a visitation tonight, an encounter by his word. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh even by his word. Lord, we decree and declare that you will appear by your word unto us in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah may the Lord bless you in Jesus name please be seated um, I love the word of God because the word of God is a revelation of the mind of God the word of God is a forerunner of the power of God so everywhere you want to see the power of God made manifest the Word of God will always forerun his power in fact the Bible says within the Word of God is the hiding place of his power I want to teach tonight on the topic I titled the wonder walking God the wonder walking God may God open our eyes tonight in Jesus name the wonder walking God the goal tonight is to explore God's power and to know how to make his power and his might manifest even in our midst this is in line with the theme of the conference and I believe that the Lord put it in the heart of the women in this great church because we are in the days of his power and the Bible declares that in the days of his power, the people shall be willing. Hallelujah. Now, there are three attributes of God. Please let me have your attention now. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. As much as the Bible declares that man was made in the image and the likeness of God, the Bible also says we are partakers of his divine nature. He has given us the opportunity to co-legislate with him in the earth. But there are three unique attributes of God that are exclusive to him. In fact, it is those attributes that make him stand out in a class all by himself. Number one is called his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. No man sustains that ability. He can be everywhere at the same time. It was the psalmist that said, where can I hide from your presence? And he began to list several locations in the earth, outside the earth. And he said, even if I go to Sheol, hell, you are still there. So this is the first attribute of God that no man is able to mimic. It is an attribute that he left exclusive to himself. Number two is called his omniscience his ability to know all things his ability to know all things hallelujah the bible calls him the fountain of wisdom as for man apostle paul said in first corinthians 13 we see in part 
and we prophesy in part up front it tells us that the best of us is still limited in knowledge it is impossible no matter how diligent to stretch your mind to be able to capture all the knowledge that there is to know no man under any circumstance is able to attain omniscience hallelujah now we have people whose iq has been tested across the world scientists people dead and alive and a few of them have come up with commendable results that these are people that the whole world agrees to the fact that they are intelligent people hallelujah but the omniscience of god is such that he does not learn anything this is what you need to understand about god the knowledge of man comes by learning and it is progressive the knowledge that god has is absolute he does not learn anything there is no record in scripture where god has to study to learn to know progressively if that state is true for god then he no longer is god are we together now we have to depend on him for knowledge are we learning already the bible says in thy light we see light that means the knowledge that we have both secular knowledge and knowledge of spiritual things depends on the illumination that comes to us from above hallelujah for with thee the bible says is the fountain of life it says in thy light do we see light but there is no record of god having to learn no when he became a man in the flesh he had to learn under pharisees and and the doctors of the law that was simply him modeling the work of man are we together now but as god in his power and in his office as god he does not learn he knows all things his knowledge is absolute every knowledge you ever find anywhere not just on earth but in any part of his any any dimension of creation was outsourced from him even if perverted omniscient number three which will be a matter of discussion tonight the third attribute of god that brands him to not be man and distinguishes him from man is his omnipotence it comes from the word potent that means all powerful all powerful god is not mighty god is not powerful he is all powerful all powerful hallelujah do you believe this all powerful let's look at a few scriptures so the bible tells us that god is the all powerful god the all powerful god three scriptures jeremiah 32 and verse 17 jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 here's what the bible says ah lord god it says behold thou has made the heavens and the earth he says by thy great power are we still together it says and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for you to do this is prophet jeremiah speaking you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power scripture number two is found in psalm 62 and verse 11 very popular scripture may i please request that we read it in concert ready read god had spoken once aha uh -huh. twice have i heard this that power belongeth unto god once have i spoken twice have you heard that power in its entirety belongs to god now there's no time to begin to discuss where witchcraft and sorcery and all other occultic practices derive their power but i want you to know that if it ever produces any result it is because that power came from god remember what comes from god can be perverted are we together now yes in administering power on earth there are three levels of power the highest level of power that comes from god comes through encounters the second level of power is invested in principles and laws and that one does not depend on relationship you don't need to have a relationship with god to access that dimension of power for instance the power that is invested in the law of seed time and harvest 
you don't even have to be saved even if you are a terrorist even if you are an occultist if you farm it will grow it is still the power of god but that dimension of power does not depend on intimacy and relationship that power depends on understanding this is the dimension of power that people across the world who do not acknowledge the god of heaven still use are we together they use that dimension of power embedded in laws and principles to build businesses to build conglomerates they use it to advance their civilization because there is a dimension of god's power that is invested in laws and principles hallelujah are we still together so the bible says that all power belongs to the lord let's consider the last scripture just to prove that god is almighty deuteronomy chapter 26 we'll read three verses six to nine deuteronomy chapter 26 please from verse six to nine deuteronomy 26 from verse six to nine I'll read when the media is ready for us the Bible says and the Egyptians and the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage verse 7 and when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers the Lord heard our voices and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression verse Eight now and the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders verse 9 it says and he had brought us into this place and had given us this land even a land that flowed with milk and honey may that be someone's testimony this is a very powerful attribute of God that by his outstretched arm and expression of his power, he can bring men out of certain situations into certain favorable situations. He can take a man out of poverty into a life of blessings. He can take a man out of a life of defeat and mediocrity into a life of honor and victory. You believe that? Say amen so god is all powerful this is a revelation that i'm praying that in the course of this conference will become a reality in our lives because there are certain things you will never fear again when you truly have a revelation of the might of god you see the way satan works is that because he the bible calls him the god of the systems this babylonian system that rules our world and he knows that the fallen man depends on the impulses of the senses so satan will use situations and circumstances and with them he will downplay and and demean the power of god so that in light of what obviously plagues you it will look like god is just a little mightier than him but i announce to you in the name of jesus that this god that we serve is not just the creator of the ends of the earth he sits upon a throne that is made of righteousness and justice the bible takes time to meticulously describe the might and the majesty of this god on earth we have kings on earth we have nobles on earth we have people who have attained onto a level of might perhaps military might Many of us may be connected to, related to, or associated with generals in the army. And when you see a general walks in, in the capacity of his office, he comes with the full backing of everyone and everything. And perhaps like the president or other nations of the world, I've had an opportunity to see, you know, the army in motion with their, within their capacity as the army and it's a spectacular sight to behold hallelujah we see kings move and their entourage sometimes they have to block you annoyingly for hours minutes perhaps you have to wait patiently to honor them i don't know how it happens here but in the north if an emir is passing really passing in his capacity you are going to have to wait doesn't matter who you are hallelujah so i've seen 
kings i've seen men on earth there are people who are captains of industry and every time we hold say very big occasions there are there are, there are systems to recognize them because of the kind of intellectual might are we together now financial might and so on and so forth that already gives us a picture so now you imagine the creator of the ends of the earth was never involved in any man's election nobody voted him into power no man's annoyance or joy will change what happens around his throne there are 20 and 4 elders that bow and worship him and he says if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up stones a God that does not die cannot be sick cannot be weak does not need a relative does not need psychological support hallelujah that even if the heavens and the earth passes away you see that now the heavens and the earth can pass away and go places and he still remains god not threatened by any man's pride the bible is full of kings that attempted to threaten the might of god in their arrogance and he brought them to their knees even converting some to animals yet leaving them with the brains of humans for seven years so that they will learn that there is a god that sits upon the circles of the earth do i talk of pharaoh do i talk of darius nebuchadnezzar do i talk of herod who fell and worms at him immediately there was no time for him to go through the natural course of decay god is almighty god is almighty i'm not saying it to you i'm saying it to what has made you cry god is almighty You've heard it again and again, but I'm speaking to your situation. I'm speaking to the spirit that has vowed to not let your family go. I'm speaking to the altars that have claimed invincibility, making it look like no one can rise from this family. Listen, provided the lion has not roared, any other animal can make it look like I am the king of the jungle, but not when the lion roars. Hallelujah. This is a very simple but profound revelation. What sponsors your audacity to know that your children will be great? To know that your destiny will not be thwarted regardless what happened before you? It is certainly not going to be by your wisdom for that is limited. It is certainly not going to be the assurance of men because the best of us will still disappoint you. You need to resort to the God that is almighty. There are people who are sincere but they are not mighty enough. I hope you know that integrity is different from might. Integrity means the capacity to be truthful and to be faithful. If it can be backed up with the financial wherewithal for instance. I can decide to help you with all my heart, but I may be limited in terms of finance or whatever it is. God is not only a God of integrity, He's a God of ability. The Bible says, Now unto Him who is able to do, please say, able to do. Able to do means able to give you a child. Able to do means able to turn your son that seems to be running around and bringing you pain. Did he not turn Saul to Paul? What is it that this God cannot do? I don't know which one you have been worshipping, but my God is all powerful. My God is all powerful. All powerful means he's the lifter of men. All powerful means he can rewrite stories. All powerful means while they laugh at you, he is able to turn that proverb called Ichabod. Bring your life to become a praise to the nations. Listen, the Bible is an attestation, is, is a compendium of the wonder working power of God you see the true test of power is when it's been tested over a long time using different scenarios if you have not tested power long enough you cannot say it is absolute power watch the power of God in front of the Red Sea watch the power of God in front of a 90 feet stature wanting to throw people down in fire watch the power of God as he brought deliverance in the nation of Israel to the point that they sang the songs of Miriam I will uh, he said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea this is the God that we serve 
what is this teaching doing to you already because you see we live in a world where we interact with too many things that seem to downplay the power of God and because he resides in a realm that is invisible they usually say out of sight is out of mind so we get used to troubles we get used to the pride of godless men and sometimes we even buy into their false confidence is God really powerful with my son behaving like this is God really powerful with my business crashing since after COVID is God really powerful my marriage is about to tear apart because my husband is frustrated listen let me introduce to you another dimension of God God does not have outsourced power it's not that someone gave him power and is supervising his use of it no absolute power you see the bible says that when a man ministers are we still together that when a man ministers the bible mandates that you minister according to the measure of grace in other words it is seen for you to make propositions that are higher than the level of grace at work in your life and this is a law in the spirit that before men speak they verify whether they have the power to make good what they say so before god will utter a statement his power must be able to vet that that statement is within the circumference of his power to make good everything he has said here there is a dimension of power that sponsors it hmm. the god of heaven so is it true that when he says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth he says and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you there is a dimension of his power that insists that that word does not become a lie that he says you are the head and not the tail what is your idea of that statement the head does not just mean first position in school you've left school for decades he certainly was not talking to students the head means the head the head means above and not beneath If you believe this say amen yeah. hmm. psalm 112 blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands the bible says his seed shall be mighty upon earth it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed that wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever it's important for you to know that in this bible many people spoke demons spoke in this bible satan himself spoke in this bible are we together men in their pride and arrogance spoke in this bible men in their backslidden state spoke in this bible men at the point of repentance spoke in this bible the almighty god spoke in this bible angels and archangels spoke in this bible so when you read it it's important to know who is speaking but when you do find the words that came from the lips of his majesty by all means please believe him please believe him he has the power once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power when jesus resurrected as god incarnate here's what he had to say all authority is the word exousia all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me he says go ye therefore that means before you start taking steps have that understanding that even in lagos i still belong to the all-powerful god even in nigeria even in africa with the, the supposedly failing economy did the bible not say when men say there is a casting down that for you there will be a lifting up the basis of your confidence is the one who stands behind you as a mighty terrible one listen when that all-powerful god decides to invest his jealousy upon you woe betides the man who stands his way Yes, sir. You know, in our world today, God means many things. For someone, God means a river somewhere. Is that true? For someone, God means a bow and arrow somewhere that some ancestor used to win in war and is being worshipped. For someone, God means some kind of philosophy for someone God means some kind of alien deity somewhere so when we say God our society has sadly demeaned the idea of God 
God just means some deity that is not human or not pure human but this is not what we're talking about we're talking about the God of heaven the creator of the hands of the earth here's how the Bible puts it has thou not known has thou not heard the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth look at the descriptions the creator of the ends of the earth when you have this revelation you will stand with confidence regardless what tries to bully you in life and that all you need to do in the face of situations and circumstances is to find a way of bringing that might and that power of God to collide with the situation that mocks you and then you will watch what happened to the Red Sea happening to that situation my goal tonight is to number one help you sell a new idea about God but number two to show you something further to help you to know how to be able to draw that limitless abundant might of God because you see provided that might resides with him in his throne it do it does you no good there has to be a system of transporting it from his throne to where your situation needs that power to be made manifest you believe this shout a loud amen God is all powerful my bank account hear this God is all powerful the 10 years of no job hear this God is all powerful ah the sentiments roaming around my office and the rumors that I've been hearing that I will be downsized God is all powerful are we together dear pastor I know that since after COVID it looks like ministry has been shaken and has been epileptic but God is all powerful you need to preach to yourself you need to be a prophet of your destiny to go back home stand before the mirror even if it's the mirror of your bathroom just close it there be alone and preach to yourself and say Satan every lie you have spoken to my ears on account of the things that have happened the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it says but they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds is that in your Bible casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ he says bring in every thought regardless what it is to the obedience of Christ bring in every thought the thought of death what's this pain around my leg and the devil says cancer like father like son uh -uh. that is the time to say well I sympathize with those who may have gone before me but in the name of Jesus I declare that I will rewrite my own reality I will rewrite my own possibility hallelujah oh it's like that for everyone who comes from your village my Bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue and every nation in the name of Jesus Christ Nathaniel looks and hears about Jesus and says can anything good come out of Nazareth Jesus was not sad at him because he was right based on his perspective you know what happened to Nazarenes they had a track record that they did not have longevity of impact an example of such a Nazarene was Samson the guy came up showed up and Delilah brought him down so when they heard that there was another superstar Nazarene Nathaniel said don't waste your energy he will not last they have a track record that they lack longevity of impact hmm. could it be that someone has concluded the last person who rose from this family you all saw him he flew around the world and died as if and that lie bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ Bring in every thought is your responsibility bring in every thought because I serve the mighty God who is all-powerful so this is my first message to you tonight God is all-powerful if this is all you have and you walk out of this beautiful church knowing that God is all-powerful you will bully every darkness out of your life knowing that God is all-powerful all powerful and by the way let God be true and every man that includes every situation a liar are we together 
Number two, God desires, you may write, God desires for his power and his glory to be revealed in the lives of his people. This is the second point I want you to know tonight. That it is not enough to know that God is all powerful, but that the second point is he desires, God desires for his power and his glory to be revealed in the lives of his people that means just acknowledging that he's all powerful does not do much he's not glorified just by acknowledging he's all powerful that he wants that there be a spectacular display of that power of that glory in the midst of his people god desires for his power and his glory to be revealed in the lives of his people i believe this with all my heart psalms 107 verse 21 psalms 107 please verse 21 here's what the bible says can we read together it's projected ready one to read oh that men would praise the lord uh-huh for his goodness and for his wonderful works to who not his wonderful works that resides within the heavens and the throne room his wonderful works that has been made manifest to the children of men that every time his power is revealed in the world of men it will cause praise to arise from the earth even to the heavens oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works his wonderful healing his wonderful restoration his wonderful manifestations of open doors favor and everything that god is able to do zephaniah chapter 3 and 17 zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 god desires for his power and his glory to be revealed in your home revealed in your business revealed in the life of your children revealed in your career whatever endeavor he says the lord thy god in the midst of thee the lord thy god who has come to be made manifest in the midst of thee the bible says he is mighty then he says he will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy and he will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing the lord in the midst of thee is mighty please you believe it that God desires you are not the only one who desires to see the power of God God himself desires to see his power he says oh Lord my God is that was the lamentation the cry of the psalmist the desire of the psalmist really he says early will I seek you my soul longs for you is that in your Bible he says in a dry and a weary land where there is no water he says to see your power and your glory revealed in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary so God desires that his wonder working power be revealed in the midst of his people and in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking over someone here that there are things you would not need to tell people again the results that will happen as a result of the manifestation of God's power will do the speaking from today in the name of Jesus The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Is it in your Bible? It says, we were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. Then it says, they said among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. It says, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says, with that same mighty power, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev or the streams of the South. Turn again our captivity. Turn again our captivity. Turn again our captivity. That shame and that reproach. By the privilege of God's grace and on account of the call upon my life and what I do, I have watched the power of God from nation to nation, city to city, family to family. And you would think that after many years of watching this, I should get used to it. I tell you, for every manifestation of God's power, I stand in awe myself as though I had never seen him move. This is God for you. There is no getting exhausted with the manifestation of his power. The variety of the move of God. You will never get bored watching the mighty God in action. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. From the woman trusting God for a child who may have been mocked and then out of nowhere triplets just show up and you don't know if to call them children or miracles. You believe that? How about a family that at the start of the year is hoping to complete their rent but at the end of that year own an estate not a house how do you explain that i'm not talking of people cutting corners and fraud i'm talking of men lifted by god with the dignity of kingdom integrity if you do not believe god can go that far satan will cheat you there is an advantage we have in this kingdom we have secured by his love and jealousy the backing of the creator of the ends of the earth if he created the heavens and the earth what can he not create you know what it means to create to make manifest using invisible raw materials he desires for his power to be revealed in my life he desires that your life becomes a living epistle the apostle says that means that when men look at you here's how the bible puts it i am i am a strong advocate of results john 15 and verse 8 it says herein is my father glorified do you believe that when ye bear much fruit it says so shall you be my disciples in other words your result gives credence to my mentorship they show that i taught you they show that you have learned the ways of god it's like a coach who would have invested in training an athlete or a football team or you know some kind of um whatever it is the joy of that coach is to watch his team you know manifest flawlessly and effortlessly and you see the smile of confidence as they keep adding goal after goal and it gets bad when it's now 5-0 for instance in the case of football he feels sorry for the other team for daring his team and did you know that after that it increases their value and their perception is that true yes so god is glorified when the saints excel and that is the reason why it is within his power and it gives him joy to coordinate all of the heavenly resources that need to be put together to see that his people excel and to see his power revealed in their lives here's how the bible puts it second corinthians 9 and verse 8 very interesting scripture it says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you the bible says so that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work may abound to every good work hallelujah john 15 and verse 16 i'd like us to please read it together and to read it with conviction where we have when we have it on the screen john 15 16 he says are you ready one to read please ye have not chosen me he says but i have chosen you uh -huh, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and on account of this whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he may give it you he desires that you produce fruit he desires that you produce fruit jesus mentoring the disciples in what we call the beatitudes matthew 5 beginning from verse 13 he says you are the salt of the earth but that if the salt the salt has lost its saltiness he says wherewith shall it be made salty again it is of no good but to be thrown down and to be trodden under foot of men and then he says you are the light of the world he likens you to a city that is set on a hill the bible says which cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel is that true but that they put it on a lampstand or a candlestick and it will give light to all that are in the room verse 16 now says let your light so shine the word let means permit allow do not stop it let your light your result the outworking of the power of god through your life let it so shine before men he wants them to see it and he says that they may glorify your father which is in heaven 
God desires to be glorified. And the only way that God is glorified is when the saints are glorified. John 17 and verse 1. The Bible says Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens and here's what he said. Father, the hour is come. He said, glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Glorify thy son. Glorify your businessman. Glorify this mother. Glorify this exceptional woman. Glorify her that she may bring glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, every life here that has been marred and laced with shame and reproach, that your life has become a discussion that can occupy people for hours, talking about what is not happening. I stand by the God of heaven, foundations of Sapphire. In the name of Jesus, the mighty God, I declare that that shame and reproach will roll like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ listen whilst you are seated please in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to believe and to be ready to shake everything that is not of Christ anything you tolerate is authorized to remain in your life but the day you get angry there is holy anger you can get dissatisfied and say this ends now even though it is 25 years old it ends now this mockery ends now this reproach ends now ends now the bible talks about a man called naaman that this man was a valiant man he was a captain of the syrian army and the bible attests to the fact that he was a valiant man in war he says but he was leprous that issue of leprosy would not go one time he received an advice from a slave girl that they brought who advised him and said oh that you would meet a prophet i know that this prophet is able to touch you and he went wrote a letter to the king and to cut the long story short elisha gives him an instruction and he goes to wash in jordan and after seven times the bible says his skin became like that of a little girl did you know that naaman would have died without receiving his healing and he would have said it is the will of god i can tell you there are many things that are not the will of god but satan's authorization is because you are not yet angry enough hmm. you are not yet angry enough god desires that his power be revealed in my life god desires that his power be revealed even among the foundations of sapphire that by next year if christ tarries and they come you you will wonder who will testify and who will not because it will be an abundance of the manifestation of the hand of god increases on all sides passion for god like never before people who escape terminal diseases like smoke before the wind hallelujah so number one God is almighty almighty all-powerful number two he desires his power to be revealed in your life hallelujah number three this is the apex of our discussion tonight and please may i request that you write and then pay attention god's wonder working power i wrote here is made manifest when we call upon him god's wonder working power i'm glad this is a prayer conference that as wonderful as god is god's wonder working power is made manifest when we call upon him god's wonder working power is not made manifest when we need it it is made manifest when we call upon him now this is as simple as this point is it is why many believers may remain disappointed in spite of every truth that we have learned you see one thing with the truth is the bible says and you shall know the truth and if it is truth you have found there must be the corresponding liberty that means whatever you find that claims to be the truth and cannot administer liberty is not the truth hallelujah let me repeat it again for emphasis 
God's wonder working power is made manifest when we call on him watch this Jesus is passing Jericho and theologically speaking that would be the last time Jesus is passing Jericho and then a man who was born blind is that in your Bible that man sat there and Jesus was passing as if he did not see him and the man began to shout thou son of David have mercy on me and the people there said keep quiet don't distract Jesus there are serious things for him to do he says I I use my will to make my matter serious the Bible says he shouted the more thou son of David have mercy on me and when that happened Jesus hushed and said what should I do for you Can, that would look like sarcasm I mean what would a blind man want it would be a costly assumption to assume that a blind man would want his eyes open because in Acts chapter 3 the crippled man at gate beautiful did not want healing he wanted money is that true yes the Bible says he sat there begging for arms an ugly situation sitting at a beautiful gate and he was asking for arms and then Peter looked at him and said no you need more than arms he said silver and gold I do not have but such as I have give I unto you he says in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk the man was disappointed read your Bible he, he sat down there he didn't stand up it was Peter who reached his hand and lifted him and the Bible says the man leaping stood hallelujah are we together this is a very very powerful point because there are many believers who do not know that the wonder working power of God is made manifest when we call upon him so there are a lot of complaints and lamentations and assumptions God is it that you are watching me like this you are not going to do anything this is how you watch me I assure you while I sympathize with that lamentation by the integrity of Scripture nothing will happen or another consolation we have in our world one day go better oh no the assignment of time is not to change things the assignment of time is to reveal it takes decisions decisions that are intrinsically made or outsourced you have to be able to stamp your feet and say this is the moment hallelujah like someone who has come tonight you can say this is the moment that demonic sickness must leave my body being fine today and down next week I reject it and by the way may I respectfully advise never receive old age as a license for sickness never receive old age as a license for bodily degeneration it is not in the Bible hallelujah whilst it is true that based on our natural law as we age of course you may not have the strength and the vitality of a baby but it is important to know that you can enjoy the requisite level of vitality required to serve the purposes of God until your time is over never receive that if you have received this as an orientation now I respect doctors I respect medical people thank God for your contribution but I'm talking to you based on the integrity of Scripture here's what the Bible says that they that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God are we Bible students it says in old age they shall be fat and flourishing there are many trees there are many trees on earth that are older than humans and those trees don't plan to go anywhere you see them flourish and refuse to die hallelujah aware that they might be drought they still refuse to die they made sure that their roots went down down enough and here's what the bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water you know what that means you don't have to wait for seasons again a tree that is not planted by water will have to wait for rainy season but a tree that is planted by the streams of water it is only its fruits that it brings in season not its survival hallelujah the wonder working power of God is made manifest when we call upon him let's look at a few scriptures Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 
hallelujah jeremiah 33 and verse 3 call unto me the mighty one is saying and i will answer thee and i will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not call unto me he says and i will answer you that means when there is no call there will not be any response call and i will respond call and i will respond call concerning the health situation i will respond call concerning the job situation i will respond psalms 145 and verse 18 psalms 145 and verse 18 i love the bible the lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him did you see the word all there he's nigh not to men of god that call upon him he is nigh not to preachers, not to apostles, not to prophets. He is nigh unto all, all them that call upon him. All them that call upon him. And he says to all that call upon him in truth. That means there are people who call upon him but don't mean it. They are just saying it so that it will look like they are not idol worshippers. But they don't intend to see him manifest. Jesus, where are you? Jesus, come and he says, no, you are playing games. You are not serious. It is clear from your heart that you have other alternatives. But there are people who call upon him in truth. Have mercy upon me, thou son of David. I have no other God. Some may trust in horses and chariots. I do not even have that luxury. There is no horse and there is no chariot anywhere. If you do not help me, say unto thee, O God, do I lift up my soul. It says, O my God, let me not be ashamed. Is that in your Bible? It says, let not my enemies triumph over me. There is a way you can call upon him in truth. Call upon him in truth. Lord, I have done my best to teach my child the way of the Lord. But now that he's become a teenager, in an attempt to help him to receive superior education, he's delving into a practice that is antichrist. I have done my best as a faithful parent, but I know I am limited. This is your child. I call upon you. Arise, O great one, and help this child to not become a casualty. Let this child not become a reason for people to think serving God uh, does not pay. And God will one day your child will be roaming around anywhere in the world and mama's prayer has ascended to the throne and the mighty god will arrest him a small program will be happening somewhere and it will just feel like strolling in usually that's how it is and while he stands there the rest becomes history and he calls you one morning and says mommy and you say my son where are you now he says you can't believe it you just guess where i am said don't tell me you are with the police <laughs> and he says not anymore Saul has become Paul yeah. not anymore and the child will start asking you did you read your Bible today mommy and you say I was busy and say mommy you are backsliding already <laughs> I need to be the new preacher supervising your consistency you believe that shout amen, amen. even if not for yourself shout for somebody amen. hallelujah the manifest power of God only happens at the instance of our prayer Paul was teaching about salvation in Romans chapter 10 and when he got to verse 13 Romans 10 13 he says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord whosoever that blessing and that privilege is for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord whilst you are listening I want you to prepare your heart because tonight we are going to do some prayers there are some we are going to call upon the name of the Lord over certain issues the Bible says ye have not because ye ask not the everlasting father is ever willing to give ever willing to give but it is to them that ask matthew 7 7 he says ask and you shall receive he said seek and you shall find then he says knock and it shall be open unto you verse 8 says for everyone i like scripture for everyone that asketh receiveth 
he that seeketh findeth and the bible says to him that knocketh it shall be open how it will be open leave that to god he says just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child not the way of the wind that is how you do not know the works of the works of god how god would do it leave that to his intelligence he can use anybody including pharaoh to bless you Are we together? Most times when we say God is going to bless people, as we say amen, our eye already goes to someone and we tie somebody in our mind. That is almost witchcraft. And in, while we are saying amen, you mean amen through that person and you will never let God rest. Lord, this man is rich. What is it about one million? And God says, no, leave that to my intelligence. I want to take praise out of this. So he can use somebody who vowed that under his watch he will not rise. Like Abimelech. And he gets up and says, I had a dream in the night. What is this about you that has even made God to come and threaten me? Take gold, take silver, you can go. Is God, ba? You believe what I'm saying? Sometimes when we hear these things in church, we just think it's a nice message prepared by a preacher to excite people. Believe me with all humility, I'm not one of those people. I don't teach what I don't believe. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. You can taste and see. I join you tonight in your anger over that situation because it must leave you once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must leave you once and for all. There are families that have a signboard written on them, Ikabod. People say, once upon a time, we looked up to these people. Once upon a time. No, that statement of once upon a time, we cancel it here. Please shout a loud amen. Because the Bible says, the path of the just. Are you a believer? The path of the just is as a shining light. It says it shines brighter and brighter. That means I should never have a worse yesterday. No. A better a better yesterday i meant to say never it should never be and anything that is making your yesterday better than today i cost that spirit in the name of jesus i cost that spirit in the name of jesus i cost that spirit in the name of jesus please sit down this is a strange occurrence of darkness that happens in Africa. You see vibrant people who serve God and after 10, 20 years, one day you will see them somewhere and you are almost running away. Good afternoon, daddy. And you are tempted to say, what happened? You lived in Europe for 10 years. You lived in America for 15 years. Two of your children were professors. What is this? Last we knew, your life was an example that inspired us. And there are wicked spirits that pick people from the throne and take them back to the village in the grave and you see them say, they will tell you they will show you photos snapping with presidents with their wives and children in the name of jesus i'm saying it again god sent me here tonight anything programming failure on your future i stand by the god of heaven who helps men i cause that spirit in the name of jesus Listen up. Our world is full of people who were great inspirations yesterday, and today there is absolutely nothing. No. I believe in seasons, but I also believe that a man can be relevant for as long as you are in the epicenter of God's program. Listen, there are things you need to start giving yourself a new orientation about. Do not believe them. No. It says as your days are so shall your strength be 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 apostle you know after covid <laughs> i don't want to tell you what happened to my business but from covid till now we've been going down i sympathize with you i agree with you but do you not know written in your scripture that the axe head can float and return back again is it not in your bible 
please help me let's become believers tonight except we are just saying okay god well we, we hope we trust you <clears throat> there is a condition upon which an axe head can float back again that is the assignment of the prophetic the prophet said by this time tomorrow that shame and that reproach would have left you he was not just speaking to an individual he was speaking over the entire samaria hallelujah and we live in a world today where people can be so bold to say a lot of things someone looks at you and beats his chest and says, over my dead body and tell him it's a risk reverse that statement you have taken a risk that you cannot afford to pay for over your dead body <laughs> he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm the anointed is not just a man of god the anointed is everyone who is grafted into christ by his spirit because you have an anointing within you is that not what the bible says yes listen these are the systems that make us to walk in victory so when the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph is at the instance of this revelation you see that everything i tell you i show you a scripture that backs it there are many christians who have superstitious faith that means faith that is not founded on the word faith that is founded on empty confidence god forbid i won't die based on what and we have all kinds of cultural things my blood is white it's not black no all those kinds of none of those things has power in the realm of the spirit it is only the word of god to believe that there is something unique about your blood that witches and witches will leave you in peace it's a joke even to jesus they came satan cometh to me what immunes you builds a garrison around you is the word of god are we together now what is the basis of your longevity if i ask you i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord number one number two i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing he said choose life you choose life by verbalizing it and by walking in keeping with the principles that are pro-life number three honor your father and your mother in the lord is that in your bible that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you you don't want to live long when it's not well with you imagine a 90 year old man who started suffering from 12. that is a long time of suffering the longest we've seen in the bible is 38 years it shouldn't exceed more than that and after 38 years jesus came and said no stand up walk go and that was it every long-standing issue here that looks like it will be the year keeps coming and going and that issue does not change in the name of Jesus Christ long-standing issues must answer to the name of Jesus 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 please sit down the amen you are shouting and the prophetic words you are receiving are not empty if god opens your your eyes in the spirit it will be as though you are holding a basket and every of these things there are investments you are making there i want you to believe that don't just think you are saying amen and then at the end of it you will believe that all you are taking back home is the bible you brought no no you are taking a lot more that you did not come with and the situations and circumstances around your life will attest to the fact that you are no longer alone listen he said destroy it not for there is a blessing upon it are we together i want us to pray so let me give us one more scripture If it is true that God's wonder working power, by the way, let me, I just feel in my spirit to do a recap of everything I've said. So please do listen in case you're just connecting. Number one, we started by saying that God, three important points that built our discussion tonight, we're discussing on the wonder working God. That number one, 
it's a fact and it's something you must believe that all power belongs to God. That means God is the all-powerful God. He's called El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. El Shaddai. Number two, that God desires, as powerful as he is, he desires for his power and his glory to be revealed in the midst of his people. This should give you confidence because you see sometimes when we approach God, we approach him as if there's a laxity on his part to reach you and it's by your prayer and your cry. When you know that I am more than willing to bless you, it gives you the confidence to approach me. Am I right on that? That was the information the prodigal son knew about his father he knew that his father would be ever willing to receive him back and it gave him the energy to come to himself he said I will arise and I will go to my father I know my father will not reject me so you are not the only one who wants to see the power of God manifest in your life God himself is glorified when his power is revealed in your life amen and then number three which is where the instruction for tonight comes from that God's wonder working power is made manifest when we call upon him when we call upon him not when we want him to be there not when we assume he is there when we call upon him and there are two biblical ways to call upon the Lord never forget this there are two biblical ways to call upon the Lord number one heartfelt prayer number two perfected praise heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer heart shabakato siata heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer ye have not because ye ask not he says ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full let me show you something mark chapter 11 please give us verse 24 mark 11 24 that there are two dimensions to calling upon god calling upon his mighty power and his outstretched arm therefore i say unto you is that in your bible what things soever ye desire please help me when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them once you have not prayed and you just believe arbitrarily god loves me too much to leave me suffering like this you are right but that is not the modus operandi of the kingdom i hope you realize that god himself submits to his word the bible says he has exalted his word even above his name his reputation so there are no sentiments in dealing with god even jesus himself when he brought himself low and became the son of god he had to call upon god for every time he desired to see his manifest power for instance in john chapter 11 the resurrection of lazarus jesus himself they rolled away the stone and he said my father i thank you because you always hear me he acknowledged the government before him and with that authority that he so vocally expressed i can of my own do nothing by that power he said lazarus come forth and he that was bound came forth and said lose him and let him go are we learning we call upon him in prayer the bible says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise then he says so shall i be saved the combination of prayer and praise most believers know prayer but we do not know praise praise has nothing to do with whether you can sing or whether you can dance if you are ashamed do it in your room but by all means prayer and praise are mysterious weapons that seem to attract the might of god my bible says he inhabits the praises of his people are we together what does it mean to praise god to praise God means to acknowledge him as touching his might and his power whether it's through a dance whether it's through singing the most important component of praise is not your dance you can be dancing and yet not be praising that acknowledgement is the praise factor if in your dance and in your praise because there are many 
let me not even go there praise the name of the Lord let's just continue where let's finish in peace tonight but I can assure you that there are many things that do not carry power because acknowledgement is not in it I can dance for a show and as powerful as that is I am not praising God there, your acknowledgement you know what it means to acknowledge to acknowledge means to insist that the person you are acknowledging perceives that you recognize his contribution in your life so what most people call praise beyond the talking drums beyond the instruments beyond the nice melodies praise is from a point of acknowledgement god you did this for me look what my life has become where was i when you took me oh god and that will sponsor your dancing that will sponsor your singing are we together now that will sponsor your rolling on the ground it is not the activity that makes it praise the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all thy heart are we still here it says and lean not unto your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him you can replace that word with praise him to praise means to acknowledge I don't know if I've done it in this church, but say I want to introduce someone here, let's say a gentleman here, and let's say someone who has achieved so much, when you acknowledge people, you don't say, how are you? That's not how to acknowledge. Usually, when you get an intelligent MC who wants to introduce someone, they will start something like, in 1998, he won a prestigious award of this and that. Am I right on that? They now begin to flaunt his credentials. And at the end of it, they say, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving no further until we acknowledge this. That is what it means to praise God. You cannot praise God without talking about what he has done. That you mention the name of your children by name. Don't say there are too many. If there were not too many to be helped by God, they shouldn't be too many to be mentioned. Lord, I thank you. Look what you did in January. I didn't even know I would survive it. One month ago, I was in the hospital. I watched people die. But look, you kept me. Now you are praising him. I'm showing you how to call upon God. And he says, you did this for me. And you are acknowledging me. And then, when you are not ashamed to do it before men, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done. And they said, you are a prostitute. You say, forget the issue of prostitution. Come, come. And the people said, this is compelling. Do you know, there are many people's salvation that is tied in your testimony and your praise. You need to be able to acknowledge God so loud that someone asks you, what is the joy for? And then you tell him, my testimony is not a manifestation of pride. I am just too grateful to be silent. Too grateful to be silent. Two of my children graduated with first class. My husband just won a contract. I just had an encounter with Jesus. Five unbelievers in my family gave their lives to Christ. How do you keep quiet like that? You see, the high point in a testimony is what Jesus did. Let me give you a clue. If you are summarizing, if you don't have time and people are testifying, don't just tell them summarize. No, there is a part of the testimony that glorifies God. If that part is missing, it was just discussion or a flaunting of pride. Be lifted high. Be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and worthy, oh Lord, be lifted high. Before we pray my dear people I want you to sing me a song Aribiti Arabata go ahead Aribiti Arabata Aribiti Arabata 
lift your hands, lift your voices in one minute and bless Him. for us. Thank you for watching.